Welcome, welcome. Uh, my name's Chris, and this is my podcast where I talk with friends about books, and sometimes we drink bourbon and hang out. Uh, today, I am going to speak with Alexis Rondeau about the Jim Henson biography. Damn, I almost said autobiography, but it's not the autobiography. Alas, uh, Jim has passed, and uh, I think most of us know that by now. Sorry, I <laughs> hope that's not a spoiler alert. Um, but it is a great, epic, really just epic journey of this man who had a love for teaching and education and making it entertaining. And his his art form, his medium was, it sounds crazy, but puppets. Like, you know, as crazy as, crazy as that must have sounded when he started about 50 years ago, because it sounds kind of crazy now if your friend is hanging out making puppets in his room or her room. Um, you can imagine what that journey was like going through the 60s, 70s, um, and then becoming the most um, you know, amazing popular puppeteer of his day, of all time perhaps. So uh, this is that story of using something silly and fun and light to entertain and brighten the world. I am so excited to be talking uh, about Jim Henson with my friend Alexis Rondeau. Uh, he and I uh, definitely have an affinity for the dude, for the Jim Henson. And uh, Alexis, uh, he works here in New York City at Pivotal Labs. Uh, I like to think of him as the great inventor. Uh, he has a lot of just amazing creative talent. So I think we can really uh, just really just sit here in awe at uh, at this legacy of of Jim Henson. So uh, in this talk, we'll we'll discuss the book and a few a few moments about the first Muppets, the first Kermit that there ever was. We'll talk about uh, the first time Jim Henson made money with Muppets, which was, uh, as you'll see, selling coffee uh, in old coffee commercials. Um, we'll talk about the Muppets being on SNL in a time that Jim Belushi uh, would refer to them as the mu mucking puppets <laughs> and how horrible that incident was uh, as well as david bowie and jim henson and, and all the uh, all the great stuff that happened so yeah without further ado here is my conversation with alexis rondeau about the book jim henson's biography please enjoy look yeah you reckon read it as me yeah and um I mean, you've always been fascinated with Jim Henson, and you know, I mean, Labyrinth for me, Fraggle, Fraggle Rock, my first <laughs> yeah. cake when I was one year old. Oh had, my God, had was a Fraggle Rock had cake? a Fraggle on it, oh, yeah, of course, right? Sweet. I, did, I don't remember that, of course, yeah. but I saw pictures of me yeah. at, at one, and you know, I'm like chilling. Oh my God, my the, heart with melts. Fraggles. Yeah. So, um, oh. yeah, tell me tell me more, like, what, what does Jim Henson mean to you? Sure. Well... Uh, maybe bef um, before I answer that, because that's yeah. a whole okay. thing, right? Okay, okay, yeah. Um, um, the reason I thought it would be interesting to you is is that throughout the book it becomes clear. So f first of all, this man created created a legacy and and a world, right? I mean, several worlds. You have Muppet Show, you have the Fraggle Rock, you have Sesame Street. Still, probably most still running. I mean, this is still running yeah. on television in I don't know, all different countries, every country yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what I, what I, he reminded me of you. Um, hmm. Reading the book, um, I had my personal reasons to read the book. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely fascinated with with him, and yeah. he has influenced me. But, but he reminded me of you because I think you are also someone who's very creative, hmm. um, and and his life, similar to Walt Disney's life. Is a testament to, to, to artists to that you can use art and creativity and and new expression, expressing yourself, um, and change the world. Mm. Because I felt I feel like um, the narrative in today's world. You know, we you know we live in startup land. We you know we live in New York <laughs> City. Everything is so hardcore. Hardcore right? like what? Hardcore. Gordon Gecko, make the money, right? I mean, our idols, the idols of our generation are, or of, of this world that we kind of live in, um, success means means money, means means uh, power, right? And and that doesn't, you're not that person. To me, you're much more of a sensual, you know, you're, you care. Mm, yeah. And I felt that this book was really re relaying how much he cared and how how important that was 
and how he how he created an empire based on yeah. softness instead of hard. I think that was what struck me the most about the autobiography was yeah. how much um, how much he just wanted to make really good art and how much he wanted to make people smile yeah. and like his staff and the, the yeah. children watching it such that he a lot of times I mean throughout the book he doesn't give. Um, like he like a lot of times they want to sell the I think it's the Sesame Street figures right, right. and he refuses you know right. he's like no I don't want, I don't want these being sold I don't want money um, you know at the en- at the end of the book I guess we're kind of spoiling in a way but it's history but at the end of the book there's this whole thing with Disney and Disney wanting right. to buy the Muppets right. and you know until he basically passes away he yeah. says like you can't have you can have you can, you can have the Muppets I would love you to have the Muppets except. Sesame Street because yeah. they are for the children and they are for and I think he always yeah. had this like the way that he I don't know he wanted it to be to be like he wanted it to be better than just the money like he yeah. needed the money to be creative but yeah. that was the thing that was really really yeah. inspiring it's, it's to incredibly in high level of integrity towards his work yeah um, yeah how he 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 didn't budge throughout the book as you're saying right yeah. I mean he could have started selling little figurines and 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 become a millionaire and just you know do whatever oh, whatever you want totally. but, but but despite that he did become a millionaire and yeah. he didn't have to yeah. give it up yeah yeah uh, another actually another example yeah. in the book that or in his life I guess you could say that, um, Muppet babies came to mind for me many mm-hmm. times because I remember watching that when I was young yeah right and to me I was like how is Muppet babies gonna fit into this whole like dark crystal labyrinth like all these like you know gorgeous epic characters Kermit all this stuff uh, to me Muppet Babies always did feel like a sellout thing like years later when I was I was young I was enjoying it but yeah. when you see the negotiations there was a lot of um, him putting values into it yeah. you know and, and for him it was a it was a way there was always a le- needed to always be a lesson about creativity is what he said and exactly and and, and Muppet so I mean so I, he, I was in Germany, right? Uh, you had Muppet had, Babies in so Germany? We had, we How do you had say all it in German? It. Um, well, it's all the same. It's it's all we same. said Muppet Babies, right? Uh, okay, it's the yeah. same. It's the same. <laughs> um, but what, um, what the core ba- value or core message of every single Muppet Babies episode w- would be, that, or the storyline would always be, they go in their imagination to new places, ah. right? So, so, so some kind of, in, uh, sa- in, what is it called, the inciting incident? or what, Yeah, inciting right? incident in a story. Right, right? Yeah, so yeah. something happens in the beginning, um, and the hero's off, to, right? And yeah. then, and then they have to figure something out. I don't know, like um, um, they're you know, mo- some something happens, and, right. and they and they go into this creative, imaginary land where they solve the problem at hand, and and then come back and have having learned something. And uh, the format was definitely sellout. It was like sort of a cheap animation. It felt a little cheap, right? But um, and they I, talk about that in the book, is they talk about yeah. how after Muppet Babies, then all these other Flintstone babies and all these other. Oh my god! And so it felt to me as yeah. like a ten year old or whatever. Like yeah. I was just like, oh, like these are this is just some cheap way to make money off yeah. of it. Even at that age, I think a little bit I yeah. started to like feel like, well, but I enjoy it. Yeah. But well, it was definitely made for kids, I would yeah, say. Right? Yeah. Versus, I always thought, um, felt the Muppet Show for me, you know, in 1983 in Germany. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kid. I'm, so, I'm five years old or so, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm just seeing these fluffy, furry things <laughs> on screen, singing and dancing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just, like, loving it, right? Love I mean, it. we had three TV channels in Germany um, on, up until the early 90s. You know, the three state TV stations and in Germany, in Germany, like yeah, three yeah. TV only three. Stations. That's all you had, right? And and so this was, Muppet Show would come. And what on year is that? 1980? 1983, four, right? So, oh my God. and Sunday, Sunday was TV day, sort of where all these shows would come up. Um, and ah. Muppet Show would always be on Sunday, and um, yeah, here, 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 were this, and you would gather around. This was like a thing. Wow. Um, and and we would sit. The kids would sit in front because we were smaller, right, closer to the TV. And the parents would sit, uh, adults would sit in the back. And for for us as kids, we just I mean we just loved it because it was it was fun and it was sort of you know the uh, you know the upgrade from Sesame Street, uh, which was also amazing, of yeah, course, right? Yeah. Um, and I think what was great about it too is that for the adults, it was I mean it was commentary. It was it was risque sometimes. You, yeah. You know, we didn't know. You yeah. know, like. Uh, like the curvmits and uh, you know and 
and Piggy's relationship and how complex that relationship is. For us, it was just, you know, groomy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Miss Piggy, right? I mean, it was like such a, uh, such a hard, it's easy to feel it. Yeah. Um, for kids, it's so accessible. And for yeah. adults, it's so awesome to kind of know, be in the know. Yeah. Well, because, and he always talked about, so in, he talks about um, puppets aren't for kids. Yeah. He has to defend that his whole life. Yeah. He has, you know, yeah. and everybody is like, yeah, you know, this is for kids. And, and to him, it was it was just an art that could be enjoyed. And yeah. I think you can see that. I mean, you, I think that's the longevity. Yeah. You know, that, I think that's why Sesame Street, um, I mean, people, you know, are all, I just, I literally went and go saw the Muppets movie, like, yeah. I, last year when it was out in the theaters. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't go see Barney, you know, if there's a Barney right. movie. Right. There's, a, there's a, you know, there's a clear distinction yeah. between, like, and he spoke to, to all those. I he, I think is he just wanted, everyone to, be part of it. You know, I just he just thought it was like bigger than. And I think he he just had respect for the kids too. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I. I think it's, it. This is something we're sp talking about. You know, what are things that will kind of, exist. You know, a hundred years from today, and yeah. what which not right. Um, the fact that Sesame Street is still being shown um, is is just a part of kids' life today. Right. Um, I find that's that's a good indicator. It's like such a solid creative legacy. That's um, fascinating. And it's again like all based on empathy and 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 a, a goodwill and a um, and a integrity as 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 you mentioned, right? Um, yeah. That it's very pure. And and it it works, and it and what I find amazing is that it didn't exist before. Like it, like it was it, all in his head. It, yeah. Or well, first of all, as you, in throughout the book, I didn't. I had no idea how long it took. Right. I mean, they you know started in the I guess like mid late fifties with like the commercials yeah. for the coffee. Well, he was in either high school or college. Yeah. Right. 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 You, and I he think was, he started in high school actually. And then he talks about the first Kermit he made, and yeah. it was like his mother's like green coat or yeah. something, and two ping pong balls. Yep. And yeah. he put them together, and like he didn't even want. He wasn't like, hey, I want to get into puppets. Yeah. He just wa he saw this medium of television, mm -hmm. and he was like. I, I want to be on that. Yep. He saw this show, Pogo, I think it yep. was, right? Pogo he's like, it was, yep. He's like, I see this, and Howdy Doody, and I think I think he saw that, and maybe it didn't explicitly say it, but he saw it and was like, I can do that, and I can do more, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, at that time, there was no no rules. In, and, and what I find really remarkable, I, I learned about television, about the kind of gen, you know, origin of, of television, that at the core of it was it was televised right it was remote vision sort mm. of right and and you could see a theater play that it was happening in you know three towns away from you you mm -hmm. wouldn't want to drive there so you had this box and you would you could partake in something that was remote but it was happening right then and there so uh, as far as i understand that in the f most of the shows that you would see in the early f in those in those emerging times were live right. this was all live and and that's a, and that's a whole. I didn't even know that because for me, television is recorder tapes. You know, some robot somewhere in some warehouse picks out a tape right. and starts you know running something. But it was all live and it was all immediate. Um, it was a, a, and 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 him coming in and saying, "I'm gonna experiment with puppets." Um, I just think it's it's. Uh, it's so surprising. I mean, it's outrageous now. Yeah, it's like if your friend is in like the basement making yeah. puppets, that's that's a it's a very unique friend you have. Yeah. I can only imagine before, you know, 40 years ago or yeah. 50 years ago now. Uh you I mean, that's just like everybody, you know, we're very American in the 50s or like, yeah. you know, post war, we're playing football or whatever right. we do. And then there's and that. there's the guy <laughs> making his mother's coat, yeah, <laughs> ping pong balls yep. into a yep. frog. Have some Wilkins coffee, sir? If that's all you serve, I'll get off at the next town. Next town is five miles straight down. Yes. Yeah. Was it Sam and Friends? The, Sam, the Sam and Friends was, was their first was the, the first show. show that they came out and yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it coincided with the commercials, right? The Oh, the, uh, what are those? The, the co coffee commercials. The coffee commercials they did. And a bit on the side note, I love that you see them. You saw them online, right? Um, yeah. The, um, that every, every single commercial that they shot back then ended in an explosion. <laughs> like... 
we don't know how to. We, they weren't even like storytellers. Uh, so yeah. they, they weren't deliberate about. Oh, we're going to tell this. A good this. story explodes. Yeah. yeah, it's just like you know what? We'll we'll, we'll just explode yeah, the main yeah. characters uh, at the end. Um, yeah, those are worth watching. Like, they're if, really good. If you haven't seen, yeah, there's like twenty of them on YouTube. Yeah. Right? Did you drink your Wilkins coffee this morning? Of course not. Okay, that boy's got a long way to go. Yeah. And sense. and and from Sam and Friends, right? Um, um, maybe also towards what what you're doing here with with your with your startup with your business mm -hmm. about teaching people, is um, is it was once it became a show. What is it? Uh, learning by numbers, or what is it called? The the that one segment that they would oh, play. visual visual thinking visual thinking right, which is right. like a really trippy. Really early, it was Kermit. It was Kermit before he was a frog, right? Yep. Because he was just this abstract object. Yep. And at some point, people were calling him a frog. Yep. But as it was Kermit, you can see this on YouTube as well. Yeah, it's Kermit and this like jazz, like yellow glasses, Dude. jazz <laughs> yeah. object. And they're yeah. talking about how when you can say words, mm -hmm. how you think words, and like visual things appear. And it's like it's, it's totally an so, Alice trip. Alice and it's trip. it's so multimedia. Um, um, it's using. Uh, puppetry. It's using yeah. also animations. Yeah, um, right. There's animations appearing of other faces. Yeah. The trouble was, I kept on advancing, and then I got interested in jazz. Well, I don't like jazz. Jazz has a very different look to it. It moves, see, like this. It's really expanding. Yeah, he's like, I'm taking a class on. <laughs> I'm taking a class on visual thinking. That's yep. what it is. Yep. And then he goes into explaining what visual thinking like it's this like lesson on like how to how to get your thoughts out and the benefits yeah. of it. Yeah. Which again, I feel like that's something with you, you know, teaching teaching people new yeah. concepts, new new things and to learn. Um, it's good to know that these that these sort of really far out but very accessible ways of like this guy did this and 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 it made you, th it made me think about my thinking and nice. about, about how I absorb. So it's a little bit meta, but um, um, I'm looking forward to kind of seeing, you know, how you, how you come, uh, you integrate these, these things into your, into your I dig it. Yeah. You know, I was, I was fascinated. Um, uh, the, I just like little facts that like kind of fascinated mm -hmm. me, but like we were talking about how the original name of Sesame Street was 123 Avenue B, which is kind of inspirational being here in New York yeah. and how, uh, that was Sesame Street, and we were talking about Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse is on Avenue A, Just and there's down the street from here. And Basquiat grew up two blocks or yeah. two houses away from where we are. There's just so much history, and like that was a cool shout out uh, that I thought was awesome. Yeah. Um, I love this quote about teaching kids with Sesame Street, and he said, um, "Kids, they don't remember what you try to teach them; they remember what you are." Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and so that was he was specifically referring to. Um, when they were trying to get Kermit to sell products, like yeah. Kermit to sell coffee or whatever it was. Yeah. And he was just like, no, you know, they're going to remember this. Absolutely. And he, and he was, re like, the whole book, um, the politics come up again yeah. and again. I thought yeah. that was really and And this this actually is a is a similar phrased version of, of one of the very, very few quotes I think are have just absolutely impacted my life by uh, Maya Angelou. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's basically, the quote goes verbatim, um, uh, long after they remember what you told them, they will always remember how you made them feel. Oh, and yeah. I've realized that in day-to-day -day interactions, that holds true, holds true right? Um, um, I don't remember what we spoke about, you know, two days ago, um, but I do remember how I felt about it. It's very clear. There's like no denying. I That's true as well in relationships. Because yeah. I thought about how you could have a really long relationship, let's say like a three, four year relationship with someone. And man, that person could be like, they could take you out to dinner. They could, um, you know, read you, didn't like, I don't know, mm -hmm. read you to bed every night. I'm trying right, to think of like right, the kindness, right. you know, and like year after year after year after year. But if at the end, you know, toward the end of that relationship, you remember, oh, well, then they, you know, stole money from me and like punched me in the face or whatever, you know, whatever horrible thing. Right. Uh, you remember that feeling, you know, that, or, or it's just, it's an uneven kind of way that you're yeah. like that one bad, that one thing. Well, yeah. And, and that's why I guess like a, rela a relationship between, for example, uh, Jim Henson and the kids, or between yeah, us and that our is partners, a yeah. is is an ongoing thing. And we just because we said something nice or made them feel great in the beginning, 
we can corrupt that later by being yes. dicks and, and yeah. selling out and like they'll and, notice they're not they're not stupid kids they're, exactly they're exactly. people like yeah. he really had that um, and probably like thousands of children I mean me myself have you know grown up on that and subliminally or at some level mm. just get that you just get it one of the most common denominators we we all may share across <laughs> age at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, any kind of origin, even where you're from. I'm from Germany. Yeah. And I grew up on that. Is we can probably all relate to to the to, to Sesame Street. To Sesame Street or the Muppets in yeah. general. Yeah. That's a really good point. That's, Everybody. That's touched everyone's okay. lives. It's all, I mean, Disney is the obvious sort of uh, um, co-relation. Walt Disney, not not Disney Corporation, but Walt sure. Disney, how he you know touched millions and still does. Yeah, um, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. What a legacy. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, so, all right, go I'm on, gonna, yeah. Go. so I'm going to go on to the, some more facts here from the book, the, just things that really touched me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love I love this quote. Um, so we, this is... Um, the Beatles of comedy is what I'm yeah. calling this quote. Uh, so we wanted to redefine comedy the way the Beatles redefined what being a pop star was. Um, that's actually Lauren Michaels uh, talking to Jim Henson. And yeah. they were brainstorming about bringing the Muppets to that's Saturday Night Live yeah. in the early 70s. Yeah. And it happened. It did happen. Yeah. Um, but it I think didn't work out, unfortunately. It didn't work out, unfortunately. <laughs> but still. There's that, that quote, the muck, mucking the f- puppets. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it is? Mucking yeah, puppets. John Belushi. John Belushi, yeah. yeah they didn't. <laughs> so it was, get them off stage. Yeah. Mucking it's a puppets. different, it's different worlds, right? It was just, too, he was like, they had their kind of comedy. We had our kind of comedy. Yeah. And that was actually right when they broke and went to London and they got yeah. the 24 episodes to, okay. to have the Muppet show, which became yeah. the huge. So it was before that, which is also inspiring to see how many times he did fail. Absolutely. I mean, everyone's career. You read autobiographies. You see people around you, you know, successful people around us. And, like, he failed. I mean, even late in his career. Actually, more of his failures were late in his career. And you would you would just assume that this, oh, this person, he has all this money and all this talent. He can do anything. And then he had, like, this is sort of the end of the book or his yeah. life, but he had the Jim Henson show. And that was, like, yeah. not, yeah. you know, uh, even, like, I guess, Dark Crystal or, or Labyrinth. Like, there was, like... Didn't didn't make a big bang. Like in my right? memory, yeah. those are, like, epic. But, Absolutely. you know, I was 10 years old, you know, financially or critically. Yeah. Those are definitely not that. But sometimes you're also ahead of your time. Or you're not... You're, you're kind of branching out into a complete different direction. I think we think so linearly, right? Between, six, you know, let's say, you know, box office launch of a movie is either yeah. successful because it makes that much money above production costs or, or not, right? So it's like from A to B is like this line. Yeah. Um, but I think what I appreciate about his work is that it's like, it's not even on that line anymore. It's, it's and that's, I think, what, what occurs an artist or what, what was his line if it wasn't it's like it's like per, it's like 90 degrees away from 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 those measurements right um because money you're talking about money or, or like i mean like I 100 mean, percent rating impact. on rotten tomatoes or whatever yeah or yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like it's not about how good or bad was the dark, dark crystal yeah. or, or or labyrinth but how far did he push the envelope Right and and sometimes yeah. between, you can't just push the envelope by it. well so there's a there's a quote about that as well and he says um about it thinking he had two careers and you would say something like uh you know he had two threads going at the same time so one was the successful mass appeal of the muppets mm. and that basically allowed him to do the other which was the thing he to quote him was interested in and enjoyed um yeah. so the commercial success um I think it was actually frustrating because mm-hmm. once it got successful, like once Sesame Street got successful, then there was a room of people with all these opinions and he had a kind of fight and that's when he, sure. he stepped away. Like he was always the producer, but he kind of stepped away from the day to day of yeah. making all the episodes. And he went on to do like, I can't even remember how many indie films basically, like yeah. The Cube and like all these like crazy... Well, Timepiece, right? Timepiece. That was a little earlier, but that... that I, I haven't seen these. Have yeah, you seen really any of these? Good. I mean, is Time it crazy? Piece, it's, it's, really, it's on YouTube. Um, oh, really? Nice. Um, and just, it's, if, yeah, it's, I, there's nothing I can say about it that, that would make, do it justice because it's just so original. It's, wow. It's so, yeah, it's original. And, and when you see someone or something original, yeah, it's, 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 so shocking and so is he in it is he acting in it yeah he's he's in time piece he is yeah in in parts of it interesting because yeah. uh it doesn't surprise me in a way because um 
that was like his whole life was he was running from time. Like that comes up. That's like a metaphor. Mm-hmm. He, his brother dies when he's very young, mm-hmm. and then he's running from time. Basically, he yeah. he realizes. I think he calculates in his head, so to speak. Like, I have this many more years. On yeah. the right hand, yeah. On the left hand, I have all these things. Like he like knew all these things he had to do, and he was basically like, "The time does not add up." So he was a workaholic. I mean, he just like yeah. was yeah. running from time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's impressive. It's very, very, very impressive. Together again. Gee, it's good to be together again. I just can't imagine that you've ever been gone. It's not starting over. It's just going on. Together again. Now we're here and there's no need remembering when. Cause no feeling feels like that feeling. Together again. All right. So this is Chris Castiglione here. I want to again thank my guest, Alexis Rondeau. And uh, if you're interested in reading the book, I'll have some book notes on my site. Uh, Some notes, some highlights, quotes, images. You can check it all out, as well as some videos uh, of things that we talked about in the interview, such as the coffee commercial. So all that's on my site. It's castig.org. It's C-A-S-T-I-G.org. You can also find me on Twitter, at Castig, C-A-S-T-I-G, where you can suggest books. And uh, if you'd like this, let me know. And I'm considering making more. This is the first one. Uh, So I'm curious. I'm curious what you think. So without further ado, goodbye. (laughs) All right, seriously, bye.